Introduction. My eight-year-old daughter Misha wants to be a YouTuber when she grows up. That probably comes as no surprise. Many young kids find out what their parents do and decide that's their ambition too, in addition to wanting to become a firefighter and a zookeeper. My daughter sees me using online platforms to talk to people and build businesses, and she knows how much I love it. Of course, she thinks she wants to do what I do. What might be more surprising is that if you ask other school-aged children what they want to be when they grow up, many will reply that they, too, want to be YouTubers. Personal branding may not be an elementary school career day staple yet, but kids today know that making videos on YouTube, posting on Instagram, tweeting 280 characters, and snapping on Snapchat is a valid career path, and that for some, it can even bring fame and fortune. They dream of creating a popular online presence the way kids used to dream of becoming Hollywood stars. Unfortunately, unless they're entrepreneurs themselves or deeply in the know, most parents will respond to this career aspiration with, huh? Or even worse, narrow-minded cynicism. That's not a real job. Even the few who smile uncomprehendingly and offer a mild, great honey, go for it, will likely secretly shake their heads at the sweet naivete of youth. It's so frustrating to me. Obviously, the first answers suck any way you look at them, but all of the responses reveal a total lack of understanding about what kind of world we live in. It's the kind where even an 11-year-old kid and his dad can become millionaires by creating a YouTube channel where they share online videos of themselves cutting things in half. I knew this was the way things were going to go. For someone like me, with a tendency to make over-the-top pronouncements, it's ironic that one of the most prescient things I ever uttered may have also been the biggest understatement of my life. My story is about to become a lot less unusual. I first made it when Misha was just a newborn, in the introduction of my first book, Crush It. I was recounting how I used the internet to develop a personal brand and grow my $4 million family business, Shoppers Discount Liquors, into a $60 million business. My strategy was simple and outrageous for the time. I spoke directly to potential customers through a bare-bone video blog and develop relationships with them on Twitter and Facebook, inviting a direct one-on-one -on -one engagement that had previously only existed between merchants and customers in the tight-knit small communities and neighborhoods of the last century. By the time I wrote the book in 2009, I had branched out from my first passion, wine and sales, to my all-encompassing one, building businesses. I was traveling the world, spreading the word to anyone who would listen that the platforms most companies and business leaders were still labeling as pointless time wasters, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, were actually the future of all business. It seems impossible now, but the digital revolution was so young, I actually had to define the platforms. Back then, I had to devote considerable time to explaining that Facebook was this online site where you could share articles and photos and your feelings and your thoughts, and Twitter was something like that, except always public and limited to, at the time, 140 characters. Personal branding? No one knew what the hell I was talking about. It's hard to believe it now, but not even a decade ago, the idea that more than a select few could realistically build a business by using social media was considered far-fetched. I now run a massive digital company with offices in New York, Los Angeles, Chattanooga, and London. I'm still engaging with people on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and any other platform that catches people's attention. I'm still invited to speak all over the world, but I can also reach millions of people through my business Q&A YouTube show, Ask Gary V, my daily vlog, Daily V, which plays on YouTube and Facebook, and Instagram and plenty of other platforms, and books like this that you're listening to while you travel around the world. I'm working more than ever, I'm having more impact than ever, and I'm happier than ever. And I'm anything but unusual. Today, there are millions of people just like me who have used the internet to build personal brands, thriving businesses, and a life on their own terms. Those who are truly crushing it have grasped the brass ring of a grown-up hood, building a lucrative business around something they love that enables them to do what they want every day. But while in 2009 that something might have been homemade honey or custom tree houses, today it also could include being a mom, being stylish, or having an unorthodox view of the world. In other words, you can use your personal brand, who you are, to market your business or your personal brand can actually be the business. Socialites, celebrity progeny, and reality TV stars have been doing this for years. Now it's everyone else's turn to learn how to get paid to do something they were going to do for free anyway. A lot has changed since I wrote Crush It, 
but surprisingly, a lot hasn't. Anyone who follows me regularly knows she can fast forward through the first 10 minutes of my keynote speeches because I'm just going to repeat the facts of my life and my opinions in the world pretty much the same exact way I have been for almost a decade. Once those 10 minutes are up, though, you never know. And that's what I'm going to share in this book. The part of the keynote that changes every six to nine months because that's how frequently the platforms evolve. I want you to learn the most up-to-date information on how to best leverage internet platforms and create powerful, long-lasting personal brands. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go off script here for the first time. I know everybody just cheered who's been listening to my book for a long time. What's amazing about doing the audio book uh, after the book comes out or after I've written it is things have already changed. So I will absolutely be jumping in and out of reading this book uh, and, and updating any nuances or giving some thoughts to the platform changes. And while I'm off the script, I just want to thank all of you. I'm completely humbled by the fact that you decided to get the audiobook. Uh, I love you. Hit me up on Twitter. Tell me you're listening. And uh, I, I should probably get back to reading this. The biggest difference between my first book and the one that you're listening to now is mine isn't the only voice in this. By the way, off the script real quick again, I mean, literally, the stories you're going to hear are going to be read by Amy and Rich, two people that are profiled in this book, two people that were massively impacted by Crush It, and I want to thank the two of them right now. I want to introduce you to other entrepreneurs who have met their unbelievable success by following Crush It principles to build their personal brands. Some are internationally well-known. Some are still climbing their way up. All of them are absolutely loving life. Though each is unique, I suspect you'll be relieved and thrilled to see they are not that different from you. How can I say that when I don't know you? Because the secret to their success, and mine, had nothing to do with where they come from, who they knew, where they went to school, or what field they were in. Rather, it had everything to do with their appreciation for the platforms at their disposal and their willingness to do whatever it took to make those social media tools work to their utmost potential. And that, my friends, is something I can teach you to do, too. What worked for me won't work for you, however, and vice versa. That's why self-awareness is so vital. You have to be true to yourself at all times. What I can offer you is a set of universal principles. We'll dissect every current major platform so all of you, from plumbers, your pillar should be on Facebook, we'll get to that later, to park rangers, yours is YouTube, we'll get to that later, too will know exactly which platforms to use as your pillar content and how to use the other platforms to amplify your personal brand. We'll dissect the social media platforms that dominate the business world today. I talked about some of those in Crush It, but they have evolved, and there are now even bigger ways to navigate them. I'll offer theoretical and tactical advice on how to become the biggest thing on old standbys like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, and young upstarts like Musical.ly audio-centric platforms like Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes, and newcomer Alexa and Google Home. Those who have been at this for a while will find useful the little-known nuances, innovative tips, and clever tweaks that have been proven to enhance more common tried-and-true strategies. If you've been watching me closely for years and you think you know it all, please reconsider. I talk to thousands of people every year, and I hear the same questions over and over. If so many still haven't perfected their game, there's a good chance you haven't either. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go off the script right now because I've realized I've been saying this in the last week in keynotes. I think the reason I'm really out there with crushing it right now and, uh, and even doing this audiobook and wrote the book is I realized how much I wasn't going all in. Even though I was at the tippy top of the sphere 24 months ago, I really tripled down on my podcast, my video work, my team expanded, and the amount of content that I'm putting now into the ecosystem is extraordinary, and I was just underestimating how much I hadn't grabbed yet. I was fully, fully, fully all in, but I was still leaving so much on the table, and so I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, there's not a single person who's listening to this right now that isn't putting out enough content. It's unbelievable to me uh, how much is being left in the system, and so I'm excited, and that is the focus. Today could be the day that you finally get the little nugget of info that's going to help you pulverize whatever you've been holding back. Several of the people interviewed for this book said that they read Crush It multiple times. Entrepreneur and podcaster John Lee Dumas revisits it yearly. It's only 142 pages long, so not so dense that he couldn't figure out the gist in about an hour or so, and yet Dumas admits that he listened to the audiobook three times before he finally understood what I meant about personal branding. That eureka moment led him to found Entrepreneurs on Fire, 
his daily podcast interviewing the country's most inspiring and innovative entrepreneurs. Today, his show is one of the top-ranked business podcasts on iTunes, grossing, stick with me here, grossing around $200,000 per month. I know this because he posts his monthly financials on his site and shares the details about his expenditures in his podcast and other entrepreneurs can learn from his smart moves and avoid his mistakes. That's just one example of the kind of surprise and delight the entrepreneurs in this book regularly conjure up to distinguish their personal brands from those of the competition and earn hordes of adoring, loyal fans. As always, I'm going to be real with you. Even if you absorb every lesson, follow every piece of advice in these pages, most of you reading or listening to this book will not become millionaires. Do not stop reading. Stick with me. None of the people interviewed for this book knew they'd become rich. They became rich because they were incredibly, ridiculously good at what they do and worked so goddamn hard no one else could keep up. Most started out with modest ambitions of earning enough to enjoy the good things in life, finding stability, supporting themselves and their families, and living on their own terms. Achieve that kind of wealth and you won't need riches. And who knows, maybe in the process of getting there, you, like John Lee Dumas, and his cohorts will discover that you do have the talent and marketing savvy to become a millionaire. There's only one way to find out. Either way, you win. It takes pressure and fire to turn a lump of unremarkable metal into a finely crafted work of art. This book is filled with inspiration and advice from others who have walked through those flames. Let them guide you so you can see what you're capable of becoming. Consider the experience of Louis Blocka. His Instagram is Louis Blocka just spelled out B-L-A-K-A, -A, who explained in this email how he went from art teacher to thriving artist by trusting his instincts and putting his passions to work. I'm a high school art teacher, but a fine artist at heart. Three years ago, I decided to give my art career a shot outside of my seven to three teaching job. My artwork took off, but not as well as I had hoped. I didn't give up, but I did become a bit discouraged. I listened to Crush It two years ago and it helped me think bigger than just selling paintings. I saw a trend of wine and paint classes taking over the country. I asked myself why I wasn't hosting these classes if I had an actual teaching degree along with the experience of being a professional artist. Duh. So I took your advice of marketing through social and held a free, free guys, free, wine and paint class for my alma mater, Montclair State. I posted a picture of the event on my Instagram and I started to get inquiries for booking classes. I started with a class of 10 people, with maybe one class every two or three months. And I've grown to at least three classes a month, with my next class scheduled to host 100 people. I spent zero dollars on marketing, with everything going through Instagram and word of mouth. I've been able to market my paintings, as an artist, through my wine and paint class customers. I've taken all the unused materials or waste from my class and used them for my personal artwork. I've been able to grow my personal career as an artist from selling a painting for $200 to having a painting auctioned off for $1,300 at New York City's Coffee Festival this past September. I started my wine and paint business with a free event with about 10 people at a college campus, and now I'm hoping to reach $30,000 in sales next year. I know it isn't much, but for a full-time teacher and artist, it's huge. The explosion of YouTube and Instagram, the emergence of podcasts, and ubiquity of platforms like Facebook and Twitter all have led us to the tipping point I predicted nine years ago. You already have the tools to build the kind of powerful personal brand that can change your future. If you've been at this for a while and haven't gotten to where you want to go, this book will explain why. If you're a D-lister with eyes on an A-list, I can help you climb that ladder. I empathize I was on the Z-list for years and know what the view looks like from down there. If you've been making excuses, you'll be exposed at which point you can decide to stop dicking around and achieve what you set out to achieve, or admit that your version of crushing it looks a little different than you'd originally thought. See, this book is for two audiences. The first is for people who know to the depths of their souls that they are born to build something great. Natural born entrepreneurs should find all the information they need to improve their current efforts or start making plans of their own. The second audience is everyone else who wants to work. Not just the young, not just the tech-oriented, not just professionals in established careers or those looking to renew themselves because they've outgrown their industries, or worse, 
their industry is shrinking. It's in everyone's best interest to build a personal brand, even if they have little interest in becoming rich or famous. You're not computer savvy? Get the computer or tech skills you need to do this. It's not hard, and many of the people we talk to for this book have as little experience with computers as you do. In case you haven't noticed, no job is particularly stable anymore. Imagine the security you would feel if you had something going on on the side that could blow up big if you unexpectedly had nothing but time. Meet Pat Flynn. We'll talk about him later. Desperation can be a great motivator, but it's a lot less stressful if you plan ahead so that you never know the feeling. If you're earning what you need to live the life that you want and loving every day of it, you're crushing it. That's all I want for you. I think of the friends I grew up with who love video games, but whose parents forced them to stop playing because the games were new and scary and distracted them from their studies. Those kids may have grown up to make a decent enough living, but by doing something they tolerate or even hate. If only those parents could have seen how the world would evolve. Maybe the child who became a lawyer to please his parents could be earning the same amount now as an esports competitive gaming promoter or earning millions as a professional e-gamer. Either way, that lawyer would be infinitely happier. Parents are trying to get their children off Pokemon Go when augmented reality gaming is going to be huge for generations. They think their daughters should make less slime and do more algebra. Slime may be a fad. Slime could also become the conduit through which a girl learns the dynamic of supply and demand on Instagram and builds a million dollar personal brand and company. The crazy thing is that she wouldn't be the first. Karina Garcia did it. She used to be a waitress. Now she's a successful YouTube star, famous for making, you guessed it, slime. How successful? With six-figure earnings every month, she was able to retire her parents. In 2017, she took a seven-week, 14-city tour to meet her fans. People paid $40 to $99 for VIP passes. Stories like that are no longer uncommon. They illustrate why we need to give our children as much freedom as possible to gravitate toward what they love doing. Because in their world, nothing will be off limits when it comes to how you can make a good living and build a stellar career. When I was a kid making straight D's and F's actually, I got caught reading baseball card catalogs in class so I'd know how much to charge for trades. And everyone would say, you're going to be a loser. Today they'd say, you're going to be the next Zuckerberg. When it comes to professional opportunities, this is the best time to be alive in the history of humankind. I don't want anyone to waste it. If you take away anything valuable or helpful from this book, I hope you will give a copy to someone you care about who is not happy in his or her current job or career. If you're a parent, please give it to your children as they start to imagine what and who they want to be. I say this not because I want to sell more books. Get at the library, I don't care. Heck, go to the dark web and download it and BitTorrent it. I don't care. I don't care. I say it because I want everyone to know that the opportunities exist, so that if someone is struggling or miserable or scared, they can do something to change that. If you care about the people in your life, you want them to be happy doing something they love. Life is short. Its brevity and unpredictability is the one thing that scares me. It's also long. A 50-year-old could still look forward to another 40 or even 50 productive years. We owe it to ourselves and our loved ones to be as fulfilled and thrilled as possible every day. So we are always ready to share our best selves with each other. There's so much in life that is uncontrollable, but our happiness doesn't have to be, nor do our careers. We can have all the control, every damn bit of it. The sooner we realize that, the better off everyone will be. I cannot do anything to make you more creative, but I hope that I can put you in the right frame of mind so that when you're ready to unleash that creativity, you will succeed. We are often told we have to make a choice, settle and do something tolerable and make money, or follow our passion with the expectation that we will be poor. There are still people out there who believe that it's a rare person who loves his or her job. That's bullshit. Our choices are infinite, when we understand today's digital environment, as are our opportunities. We just have to find the courage to reach out and make them. You're going to hear the stories of people who were scared just like you, who had obligations just like you, who were told they were being foolish or reckless or irresponsible or immature. They did it anyway, and they reaped the rewards. 
If there's anything this book should teach you, it's that the only thing stopping you from achieving lasting career and life happiness is you.